So much of mastering anything is about honing in and focus. I think about all the distractions that swarm my mind. Mortgage or rent is due on one day, but then also there's other bill that's due, and then you think about like a car lease payment, and or oh, the grocery store list that I didn't make, the leak that I forgot to fix, and the script that's overdue, and the pitch deck for the big commercial project that's past due, and, and the upcoming month of travel, and then it's like, oh wait, what do my kids think of me? And am I a good dad? And have I been a, have I been a good husband lately? Am I stewarding my gifts? Wait, how how did he get that job? Why is her career moving so much faster than mine? So should I just give up and go work somewhere else? All these distractions that swarm my mind, and you kind of realize in our lives, in every facet it seems, you can't pick up your phone and look at it without your notifications bringing stress and alarm or. It, it seems like you can't open text messages without texts that may overwhelm you or take you to a place that you don't want to go. You don't know who's on the side of that phone call or what news they're bringing. We can't turn on the news because of how polarizing it is and how twisted different outlets make the truth to be. So we're left with one solution, one decision, to lean in and find God's voice in the midst of calamity, in the midst of chaos, outrage, and disaster and somehow, in all the rubble, and all the noise, we'll find God's still calling to us. And, and a lot of times we deal with this notion that God cannot be found, the noise is too loud, the storm is raging too high for God to be able to speak into my life in this moment. The stress feels insurmountable. The reality seems at face value like my back is against the wall and it feels like everything is yelling for me to die, for me to fail. God comes in a still small voice. If Elisha was running around like a chicken with his head cut off, he would have missed that God was even trying to say something. But because he slowed down enough to hear God in the hustle, literally, he was running to save his life. Elisha is here telling us that God still speaks. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, God still speaks. And he speaks. He speaks into your life. He speaks into your heart, into your situation. And he's still speaking right now promises that he made to you years ago that seem like they would never come to pass. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. He's still speaking from the edge of eternity into your tomorrow to help you manifest your destiny. And it's incumbent upon you to release yourself into ignoring and silencing all the noise and all the chaos so you can hear God saying, live, live, live. And in, in pursuit of making greater art or storytelling or graphic design or whatever you do, that blaring voice within you will have you seeking approval, sometimes from some of the most unfulfilling places. And it's only when you steady yourself and quiet the false thoughts that you get to hear God speak in the most peaceful way and guide you so very gently into peace, joy, and fulfillment.